episode of Stories of TBM. Today's guest is Mindless Turks. Thanks for joining me for this interview today. Yeah, no problem. All right, so where are you from? What country? Uh, I currently reside in the United States, uh, more specifically Raleigh, North Carolina. All right. Uh, what, how old are you? What's your birthday? Or uh, let's birthday say uh, in about a month or so, I'll be turning 30. All right. So not that old yet. Uh, what profession are you? Uh, I work in IT, uh, and that's kind of a wide range there, but more specifically, I monitor data centers for a living. All right, something just popped up. Uh, yeah, I see you left to join. <laughs> so what profession are you working at? Uh, I work in IT, uh, but seeing how that's a general answer, um, more specifically, I... Um, monitor data centers for my company that I work for. Uh, so it's sometimes I have fun, sometimes I don't. All right. Then let's move on to TF2 specific questions. Uh, general ones first. What is your main class and your main subclasses? Uh, generally, I tend to play pyro or heavy. It's, that's kind of a toss up, depends on my mood. Uh, some days I feel a better heavy and then some days I feel better at pyro uh, so a B that one so either it's if I'm playing heavy then my secondary is gonna be pyro playing pyro secondary is gonna be heavy uh, but after that it's usually sniper all right uh, how long have you been in team play first I mean the overall group Okay. Yes, if, uh, if you dig deep enough in TPS history, you'll find uh, my old alias, which uh, I'll leave out because I use that to help find cheaters and servers. Um, if you dig deep enough and you know that handle, uh, you can find me active in TPF all the way back to 2002, uh, which would put me in high school age, roughly. So about a little over 10, uh, actually that would be what, 14 years at this point? All right. Is that one of the names that uh, that Paladin mentioned in his TPF video? Uh, I haven't watched his TPF videos, so possibly, maybe not. He may have referred to me by my new name uh, versus the old name. Yeah, he did not refer to it. Um, how did TF2's TPF happen exactly? Because I've heard rumors that it's actually get buried multiple times and reopen again? Ah, yes, the fun story. Um, so let's let's go all the way back to uh, when first T the first TPF. Uh, so that was a Team Fortress Classic uh, based group that uh, sometime around 2005, I want to say, uh, went from just Team Fortress Classic to many games. And Thus also had a fraction group that splintered off and did their own TPF. Then I managed to bring both groups together. And somewhere along those lines, I predicted that Battlefield 2, for some reason, would end the group. And I was correct. It, as soon as Battlefield 2 hit the ground, it this TPF just uh, dis disappeared completely. Uh, and that probably had something to do with the fact that the domain name that uh, was registered by that the other splinter group had actually uh, was deregistered and re-registered by a, let's say, not safe for work group. And um, thus quickly just obliterated any contact the group had amongst each other because we didn't use Steam groups. We actually used the website. And right. yeah, uh, so if the website disappears, obviously the whole group is going to quickly dissolve unless you can get it back together in some portion. Now, it took me, I think, six or seven years to recover that domain name. Uh, and during that process, we used alternate domains and we tried, when I say we, I'm referring to McIlroy and myself. McIlroy being one of the original founders, or in my mind, one of the original founders of TPF. 
Um, right. So, over the six or seven course, years. Yeah, six or seven years it took me to recover that's, the domain. That's incredible dedication for this domain name. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, six or seven years. That is definitely incredible dedication to this. Uh, I only reason why I was doing it because I actually really enjoyed the group. It was a group that, yeah, if I'm having a bad day, I can easily jump in and know that I can either chat with people I would probably don't like really care about what was going on, but more along the lines, I can jump in and just my mood would turn around. So if I could bring that back, that's what I was going for. And yeah, team play or having actual team play in newer games because uh, the few videos I've seen of people playing online and I'm not talking just TF2 in general, but I'm talking everything. Um, yeah. I see people that are playing games that are like, capture the flag, but they're, they're just playing killing deathmatch. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that's what people should be doing. I'd rather bring back the enjoyment of actually playing the game for the game. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, for example, if you go in a pub and Turbine is on, well, we actually once got kicked for playing the objective on one of those pubs. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, and that's why I run the server like I do, because I can go, yeah, I want you to play the objective, and if you're not, I'm going to kick your ass out. Yeah, exactly. For example, a friend of mine um, just... Uh, that I dragged into the group so that it would change his mindset a bit because he's still new and I don't want him to get corrupted. I uh, warned him when he decided to go battle medic from anger that I'd kick him if he didn't play for his team. Yeah, uh, unfortunately we can't win everyone, but uh, we can do our best to try to make the game much more enjoyable for ourselves and hopefully everyone else. Exactly. Well, next question is: What are the games where you active in, that have uh, where you active in that have a TPF side to them? Oh, well, let's see here. Obviously, Team Fortress Classic because that was where it all started. Um, those that are old enough, and if you're dedicated enough, you could find Sven Co-op. I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, basically, that's a complete cooperative players versus the map usually type uh, mod from Half-Life 1 days. Even lets you play Half-Life 1 uh, uh, cooperatively if you set it up right. That's right. Uh, let's see here. I You can't really count it, but the way I played it with my friends, you can. Um, I used to play StarCraft a lot. StarCraft 1, not 2. Um, with a couple friends that lived in Illinois, I want to say, and they, we'd play th usually like 3v5, three of us versus five computer players, and each of us would pick one class, or one of the three different types of uh, classes, I guess you call it, uh, in StarCraft, and one would be, because each class had their own unique ability, so I would always play Protoss, thus I would not have an immediate defense, so the person playing Terran would reserve would put defense in front of my base but as soon as i got to a point i would roll my defenses out across the board and then they would turn all their defenses into offense units and eventually would end up steamrolling the map once we hit a certain peak point thus we played as a team to defeat the computer uh, let's see also uh i'm trying to think i don't remember many other games other than that because i kind of keep I, even though I have a large library of games, I only play the games that capture and hold my attention because if the game is made terrible, I'm just not going to play it. I'll probably buy it, sense. try it for 5-10 minutes and go, this is crap, I'm on, why did I buy this? And I'm stuck with it now, so it just gets, sits on the digital shelf. All right. All right, next question would be, do you um, let people on your friends list on Steam in general? In general, I tend to uh, keep just friends that I either personally know or I've uh, grown to actually 
treat as a true friend. Uh, and that's not to say everyone in TPF I wouldn't call as a friend. I would just call them as I know the gr you through the group and I don't know you well enough yet. Um, so, so example like Paladin, he I think he keeps this kind of a similar idea. It's one to keep the list from exploding. Two, uh, if you have a you end up getting a following and you start getting people like just randomly going, yeah, let me add you. All right, well, I'm in the community chat. If you want to chat with me, you can always join me in the community chat. I don't need to have this direct friendship relationship on Steam Friends just to talk to you if I need to. Um, so that's why uh, I, when people send me a friend request and like, I, I got one right now, uh, I'm just going to ignore it because I don't know you well enough. And if I don't know you well enough, I'm not going to add you. But if I end up talking to you on Mumble or playing the game with you a lot, I might actually add you. As, simply just because I like to keep things as small as possible and as short and clean as possible. So rather than have this ballooning list of people adding me, I just ignore everyone that I don't know to a point to where I feel uh, comfortable is not quite the right word, but it's the first word that comes to mind. Um, adding to the list. You just don't add friends in a way that makes the word friend lose its value. Correct. Uh, but yeah, that's actually the best way to put it. Uh, if I don't see you as a true friend, I'm not going to add you to the list. I'll call you as a friend via the group, but I'm not going to call you a true friend. Right. All right. Uh, next question is going to be, what exactly does TPF mean to you on a personal level? On a personal level? Yeah. Obviously, team play first. You play as a team, work as the goal, or work towards the goal, and have fun. Uh, and if someone's having a bad day, either do their best to try to cheer them up, or just let them vent if they need it. But mainly, it's right there in the name. Team yeah. play first. So basically, what you're saying is it's, of, of course, important to uh, hold to the name team play first in game, but also to be uh, loyal, to be a good friend, to be a good like comrade to your yes. group of people, even yes. outside of the game. Exactly. Uh, because if you look at, um, at least in my perspective, uh, military groups where people bond together those groups they don't they work as a team but then afterwards they the ones i'm aware of play together as a team like they go play football or they go hang out together they're they have comradeship yeah that's basically the same thing that i'm trying to do with my highlander team lucis nocturnus by the way uh, and that's why it's growing so slow, because you, you know that maybe that sometimes some people get uh, get people banded together, just pick from skill, and then there's no real comradeship, and someone's like, no, I'm going to leave for a better team now. And then the whole team is screwed up. Yeah, I wish you best of luck on that one. That's something I don't quite understand, but I'm willing to support in any way that I possibly can. So short of actually yeah. playing on the team. I'm trying, to, well, like I said, I'm trying to get together a team that holds this, basically the same values as TPF does. And when I found out about TPF, I just joined because, well, it holds the same values that I wanted to have in my team. <laughs> All right, the next question is, um, how long have you been playing Team Fortress 2 in general? And how many hours do you have on count? Let's see, Team Fortress 2. Uh, I'm cheating right now. Give me a second. I'm actually just pull up my profile. I would say, uh, actually, I do have the uh, beta tag. I actually did play TF2 beta for approximately two months, thus still earning the tag, I believe, I, or item. I think I have. I could be wrong on that one. Um, and then when they first released it for Linux, I again played it for about two months, and then I had life interrupt us on that one and as of recently when i moved to raleigh uh almost a year ago i've been playing tf2 probably about i don't know six months after that since then so in grand total less than a year all right 
And let's see here. According to Steam, I have just shy of two, uh, 200 hours on record. Oh. But I'm going to bet that number's record. wrong because, uh, like I said, I, I played it way back when it was beta-ish and when they first brought out the Linux. I'm not sure if they actually had the counters working at that time. Because there's some games on here that I know I have way more hours than they mention. Right. Uh, what what exactly made you decide to open a Team Fortress 2 TPF? Um, that was actually something Paladin brought to my attention. Um, he came to me one day, and this actually will play back to a previous question that we never finished. He came to me one day and simply asked, uh, what do we do, or what about TPF? Is that still around? And I said, I've tried to relaunch it many times, and uh, it failed. And he said, he asked me why, and I pretty much said, I just couldn't get the user base going. And he said, well, I have the user base. I just need to know when. So I spent about a month or so working it together because I figured, what the heck, what's another try out of the so many tries I had made? And once I got the website up and running, got the form working, got what I thought was a good Steam community group set up, which, uh, sorry for everyone who was listening to this, we actually had to move from old group to new group because uh, I could never catch the person who actually owned the old group. So made a new group and we ended up transitioning over into that one, but that's jumping ahead there. So once I had everything ready, I basically told Paladin, all right, I think it's ready. I got a server, I got this, I got I got everything, I think. And the only way to find out what's missing is to push the go button. And that's what he did, and it took off again, so. I think, I think I'm speaking for everyone here, every true TPF guy. If I say that, even if I get a bit sentimental here, from all of my heart, I can only thank the both of you, because TPF is what I and many other TPF people think will save the values that some players see in a team-based game like Team Fortress. It's what is needed in order to save the game, or at least the way it is meant to play. And when I, when I first found out about the group, well, also via Paladin's video, I immediately joined because, well, like you say, like everyone says, on pubs, people nowadays only deathmatch. And, and for example, when I try to get into competitive one day and try to build a team, you won't find anyone on pubs, so. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I don't join pubs if I can help it. Uh, yeah, I have my own server, but even then, I'd probably just play with bots or something if that was the case, or play like a specific map like snipers but not actually like play a common map so yeah Some, something where it's either if it's going to be deathmatch it's going to be specific deathmatch or if it's if it's going to be team play i'm going to make sure i'm going to play with something in this case it would be a something that would actually have team play aka the bots even though they kind of play towards the deathmatch but you can only wrangle them so well but they actually do work for their goal Right. Uh, the last question that I want to ask you is, do you have any specific plans regarding um, TF2 or TPF in general in the near future? Um, let's see here. I personally have an idea. If I can find the maps, uh, one of the things I did in the TFC days is we ran holiday maps. Um, there was a Christmas two fort and a Christmas well, I believe, in the classic TFC days. Uh, so we ran a server that had those maps more heavily weighted and showed up more. So during the holidays, if I could find the same, similar maps for TF2, I'd like to do the same. But what I'd also like to do is uh, potentially do like a small gift giving giveaway. Like I'll buy like a few random ass games on. Steam and hold them as gifts and just make a sign up list and you're going to get the uh, a random pick out of the list if you sign up if you're lucky enough to get one of those spots so like right now I've got like three copies of Gary's spot 
I don't need three copies. So two of them are gifts. So right. I'm thinking I'll pick up a couple more cheap games throughout the, the next few months. So I have a list, a, more than just two gifts to give away. So that way, uh, in the winter, when it comes around holidays, I could uh, do a giveaway and say, okay, everyone gets one. No complaining what you get. And essentially gift people who some games. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to do that just yet. That may just be you sign up and you get picked at random and you get what you get, which people may not like. I'm still working some details out, so this is kind of like a little foreshadowing what might be coming. Um, so that one's the distant future, what I'd say. When I say distant, meaning by the end of the year. Uh, but what I am thinking is... Uh, the week after my birthday, uh, which will be like the first week of September, so the week after that, um, I might actually be running a uh, TF2 birthday event, uh, simply because, hell, I'm, I'm turning 30, so. <laughs> yeah. And even then, I may give the Gary's mod away then, too, I'm not sure. Um, but that one's quickly coming up, but I know for sure I'll turn on birthday mode for that ser for my servers. Um, during that weekend after my birthday. Or the week after my birthday, I should say. Not the weekend. Well, weekend of the week after. Uh, whatever. Screw it. It'll be an event. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask, like the very last question now. Uh, you, know, you do know that in the beginning of TF2's TPF, we've had... Uh, after it got kickstarted by Paladin, uh, we did have the problem of mostly only being able to fill a server if either Spirit or Paladin is on this on that specific specific server. Uh, do you think that we actually already managed to at least to some degree solve that problem, filling up the service on our own, or do you think that still needs a lot of time until it works properly? Time. And the reason why I say that is uh, I can sit as a, I, I work from home, so I can sit here and watch the, the current counts on the servers a lot. And every time I seem to check, it's always empty. And then until Paladin or Spirit or someone joins in and it creates a massive load on the server, that load will stay there as long as they're there. But when they disappear, it'll, there's a, I would almost call it a linear drop off in players. So, and sometimes it sometimes it'll plateau about ten players, and we'll get a five v five rolling for hours on end. But what I'd ideally like to do is see that improve to where, like, say three people in chat say, "Oh yeah, I'm just going to go join the server," and they can join the server, and within five minutes, they're just going to get people randomly joining. Um, and I think the only way to do that is to just simply say or enforce the idea of people because going, looking at the servers, going, it's empty. I'll join and puts around for five minutes and see who joins. And just invite some friends as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because that's the, big, that's the big problem right now is because everyone sees the servers with zero of whatever the servers have as a max capacity and go, well, crap, no one's playing on the server. I'm going to go elsewhere. And if we don't get someone to break the cycle, they're going to stay that way. So what I would like to enforce, or not really enforce, that's the wrong word, but that's the first thing coming to mind, is, is the server empty and you want to play with TPFers and the server's empty? Join the bloody server. Wait exactly. five minutes and see who's there. Throw it in chat, you're joining the server. Throw it in this forum or whatever. Invite yeah. your friends. Yeah, sure. Exactly. And the server. The more, pe the more we stay that keep that server full, the more people are going to add it to the favorites list, and thus we're going to have more people staying in the server or more traffic to the server. Exactly. For example, um, I've had the idea, and I've written that into the forum one day a few weeks ago. I don't know if you've read that, but I've had the idea of setting uh, specific times, like 5 p.m. British time, where people would just join without caring if anyone's on or not and then just by saying all right on, and at this specific time there should be some people coming yeah so if we can get the people to think that way that 
all right, it's this time of the day, so some people are going to join. If we can encourage that way of thinking, then that should help the service a lot. Should. Uh, another thing to do would also be to, and this is something uh, Mint and I have been kind of doing off and on, and I, I can't think of a better way to say it um, other than making kind of like an old reference to old-timey cars, or not old-timey, but... Um, cars that have brakes before they're uh, anti-block or whatever it is. We're gonna, we've been pumping the servers, like we would post an event or two a day. And as soon as we post the event, server fills up for about a 30, 40 minute time period and then starts trailing off. As soon as we post another event, bam, back to full. So we've been kind of posting events a little bit, trying to keep people in the server. But because Mint and I are not always in Steam or available to get to Steam, that's not always the case. Yeah. Well, I uh, playing on the Euro server, I do feel that sometimes me, me and Kim, at least, we're on a bit more. Sometimes we do have uh, like two hours of gameplay on that server before it starts to empty again. But yeah, there are those days too when it just goes up and then goes down with the player count. Yeah, and if we can try to level out the bottom so it's not all the way as low as it gets, that will help us for sure keep people in the servers. Exactly. We have to. Like, go we ahead. need a fixed, uh, or at least a stable player base. That's what we need. Correct. Yeah. And if you go look at um, some of the more, uh, like, I use game servers, not game servers, uh, gametracker.com. I believe it is, is where I have on the website for our server list a couple graphics that show the current map, how many players, what the kind of player load is. And if you look at one of the more top ranking, when I say ranking, meaning they probably, I think they use a number of players in the server throughout the 24 hour period. Uh, the more top ranking for those, they have a more stable line of players across that 24 hour period than we do. Because ours looks like a spike and then a spike, and a spike. If we can make those spikes less prominent, the higher the ranking, and thus, obviously, more people see the server, and thus, more people join. So, we definitely need a bigger user base to stay in the servers. Right. Um, right. Uh, I think this about sums up today's interview. All right. Yeah. Thanks again for, uh, for taking your precious time for it. Yeah, no problem. All right, everyone, if you want your own story to be told in a later episode, feel free to send it to fenrisbyfeng at gmail.com. Also, feel free to add your Steam profile link so that I can contact you with Maurice. Uh, like if you did, subscribe to get to know the community more and share among other TPF members so that we have the chance to become even more of a community. Have an awesome day, everyone, and see you soon.